Elric of Melnabinet is probably one of the more... I would say interesting, but that would probably be doing him a disservice. Like, all the pulp characters, in my opinion, are interesting, or at least I think Elric falls under pulp. And actually, I'm pretty sure he does. I once heard someone call him the Prince of the Pulps. And he's a very interesting character. I think he might be... Well, he may... I've heard some people claim he's like the first anti-hero. I kind of doubt that, because... Well, we would consider someone to be an anti-hero. I think can go. you can go back centuries, maybe all the way back to the Greeks with um, Achilles. You can make an argument that he was kind of an anti-hero because he wasn't that heroic. He was kind of an asshole. But anyway, yeah, Elric is one of those, and he is intriguing in that he is a being of, I think, chaos or consigned to it, but kind of resents it and he has a tragic life like it's really sad i don't know if i'd say he didn't deserve it but yeah i would not wish his life on my worst enemy almost i mean on the one hand you get lots of beautiful women who will fawn over you on the other hand you die horribly and so do some of the women in your life there's that plus you have to carry around a, a sword with its own malevolent sentience like, I prefer the story that just says, I don't have no edumacation. Anyway, like, I've said this before in the past, but I'll say it again. There are three things, well, actually four things, that would make good source material for music writing. Video games, history, mythology, and the pulps. And Elric is kind of a prime example of this. Like, I don't see that many songs about pulp characters any, these days, or at least I'd... Not that I can find. Like, I still can't find one for Solomon Cain, which is sad. But Elric is kind of an exception to this. He has a shitload of songs. Like, the ones I compiled for this video are probably just a fraction. Like, I highly doubt I got all of them. But, yeah, despite his sad life, the stuff that happens to him in the story was pretty metal. I mean, if you look at the paintings that people make of this guy, they look very metal. They look intense. They look epic. And, yeah, the stuff just is great. The Michael Moorcock deserves way more recognition than he gets, in my opinion. Like, The Witcher, which I, I do believe is plagiarized, gets a lot of public consciousness of recognition but Elric for some reason is not I think it's because he hasn't been culturally re relevant for a while that could change though I, there were attempts to make games in the past but they kind of fell through which sucks because one of them looked like it was ripping off a of blood omen which I believe was kind of influenced by Elric I can never know for sure but anyway yeah this guy has some good songs that I thought I'd recommend and I would hope maybe if you see this video and you are into maybe a genre of metal or you're willing to branch out, you'll give these songs a listen to. And with that out of the way, I think I'll just move on to the meat and potatoes of this. And the, f the first three I'll be talking about are from a band, like the first three slides anyway, they're by a band called Domine. And I should say before I proceed, uh, all these songs are either put on here because either they reference stuff in the Elric stories or they reference Elric himself or characters from his story. And these are just songs that I think that I'm, that I'm pretty certain reference those things. Not all the songs on the album are on here. There's way more on them, so be sure to look them up. Anyway, Don't Mind was a is a Italian metal band. I actually found them out when I was looking for Ariok on YouTube. And uh, they had three particular songs that I thought were in, pretty uh, out there. You've got Arioch, the Chaos Star, the Prince in the Scarlet Robe, and the Song of Swords. The second album by Domine is called Stormbringer Ruler, the Legend of the Su Power Supreme. And I gotta say, this one's actually kind of a downer album. Well, most of these songs are kind of downer because, of, because it's about a tragic story, but anyway. There are three songs from this album in particular that I listened to that I thought were really good. And they're kind of like, it's a three-part thing. And I can swear there's a word for this in music, but I have no idea. And it's kind of like it's telling a story. 
There was actually something like that with, um, oh, what was his name? Blackie Lawless's band. They had two albums that told a story. This one does something similar. And it has The Bearer of the Black Sword, The Chronicles of the Black Sword, The End of an Era Part 1, Horn of Fate, The Chronicles of the Black Sword, The End of an Era Part 2, and Forevermore, The Chronicles of the Black Sword, The End of an Era Part 3. And i got to admit, that third one is really depressing. Like, it is very depressing. It's like, it's like a repeat of the 70s. It's practically telling you to get a shotgun and put it in your mouth. I mean, it doesn't, actually, for any Puritans who see this video and try to make a crusade against that song. It really doesn't, but it is very depressing. But still epic. Next is the third and last album by Domine, or Domine, uh, Dragon Lord Tales of the Noble Steel, the last of the Dragon Lord, Lords, Lord Elric's Imperial March, and Thunderstorm. Now, the first one, the last of the Dragon Lords, that is a depressing one, kind of, but still kind of metally epic. Thunderstorm, I was kind of hesitant to put on this list, but it's on here. So, um, yeah, give it, give it some, check it out. Agents of Power by Skeletor, I believe is how you pronounce it. You have Agents of Power and the Young Kingdoms. Actually, let me make sure I got that right. Because um, I have the list with me right here. Yeah, no, it's just Agents of Power and... Yeah, that's it. These are two songs... I mean, I like the Young Kingdoms one just because of how funny the narration is. Because it's like very short, but it's got a narration to it in the middle. That I thought was really good. And kind of funny, actually. Because of how it, he says the good wind. But yeah, there's also this song, these two songs. Okay, these are two songs that, like, this is an album I could not find online to put on my phone so I could listen to on the ride home from Florida. I wish I could because they sounded pretty good, but this is from a band called Battle Roar, and I think the album is, itself is also called Battle Roar, and it had two songs, Morning Sword and Divem Tavar. Now, Divem Tabar, I believe that is a reference to a character that Elric knew when he was still the Prince of Melna Benet. And I believe in the new run, he killed him to satiate Stormbringer's hunger. And I believe Morning Sword was Stormbringer's, like, twin. Or, like, I remember, like, my knowledge of Elric is pretty limited, but I could swear when, in the new run, when Elric and, what's his, Yerkun are fighting... Ariat creates two swords. One of them is Stormbringer for Elric, and the other one is for Yerkun. I believe it is called Morning Sword. So that's what I believe this is a reference. If not, it's a reference to something else in the story, but the song itself is pretty good. So is Divem Tuvar. He was a, I thought, a good character. It's kind of a shame what happened to him, even if he was a little uh, bloodthirsty. But yeah, there's these two songs, and moving on. Okay, this is actually from two separate albums, but it's one song, and both are by the same band, Hawkwind, and I think they were used in the albums Live Chronicles or The Dream Goes On, and there's just one song I wanted to reference on this one or recommend. It's called Moonglum. Now, Moonglum is a reference to, well, this song is about one of Elric's friends in the story who's called Moonglum, a jovial mercenary who uses two swords. I kinda, I'm kind i almost sad when I find out what happens to him, just because, like, nothing in Elric's, Elric's life goes pretty smoothly, so I have to imagine Moonglum doesn't have a smooth ride either. But the song itself is pretty, I want to say upbeat, it's not as down, it's not as downful or depressing. And I kind of like the opening lyrics. Um, Moonglum, a friend without reason. Moonglum, a friend without cause. Sounds like an awesome guy, to be quite honest. But then again, that that's I may be a bit ignorant on that part, so forgive me if I am. Actually, no, don't forgive me. I say what I want. But Yeah, and I think at one point there was a live concert and they were singing this. I could swear I saw Lemmy in that video. Like, I swear to God, I, could, I swear with my... Hand on a Bible. I could swear you would see a young Lemmy in that live performance. 
He was making this funny face while he was playing him. But, um, yeah, there's that. Next is a song by Blue, o Blue Oyster Cult, I believe is the name. It's called Cult Cultosaurus Erectus, or that was the name of the album. And the song is called Black Blade. I gotta admit, this one was kind of psychedelic when I listened to it. It sounds like something you listen to when you're high. But, yeah, and I think Michael Moorcock was actually involved in the writing of the song. Or that's what I heard, at least. But, yeah, it's good. It references certain events in the story, like Elric being the owner of Stormbringer, how he resents being its owner. And sometimes he feels more like a slave than an owner of the sword. So it references things about Elric's life in the story without naming him. And lastly is... Probably my favorite song about Elric, or I think it's referencing Elric. It's supposed to be based off, supposed to be inspired by, I believe, Eternal Champions was the name of the story, but it feels like it's just referencing Elric's life basically. And it's called at the, it's called Talonorn Into the Void by Blind Guardian in their At the Edge of Time album. And this is probably my favorite song just because of the tone. It feels very metal, but not too metal. It has, like, there are very good lyrics in it that I like. It references Elric's life, kind of like, um, one was a black sword, my soulmate, my, either a savior or something else, um, away from the aisle, uh, something, I'm weak. Hail and Week, I believe. And another one was, I don't belong here anymore. Now, that sounds like Elric in a way, because of what happened to him in the events of the first story. Well, not the first story, the prequel to the first story when he was still Emperor. And him leaving El Melna Mede Men Melna Bene. I swear, I can speak English. It's just my mouth for some reason doesn't want to work. And it references, and he left, and he left his enemy in charge, and, yeah, oh, and the last, one last lyric is, by the end the damage will be done, or something like that. It's hard for me to remember now because my brain is in a haze. But yeah, this is, my, in my opinion, the best song about Elric out of all of them, that's why I saved it for last. And there's still more Elric, Elric and Elric Saga songs for me to listen to. These are just the ones that I heard while I was in Florida that I liked the most and I wanted to talk that I wanted to recommend. Um, like again, it's usually a, a downing song, but the depending on how the song's composed, it can sound pretty epic. And this is probably one of my favorite pulp songs out there. There's this one and the Shadow Knows. Of all the songs about pulp characters, these two are probably the those two are probably the best. And it references I just like how like with the Black Blade, it references Elric without actually naming him. And yeah, that's it for the list. Um, I hope you check these songs out, and if you do, I really hope you enjoy them. Excuse me. And yeah, also check out the Elric stuff in general, like the comics or the novels. If you can get your hands on the books about Elric, yeah, get your hands on them. They look good. The story sounds epic. I'm I'm resigned to just reading the comics. Like, I just got um, the 80s ver variation of, the, of an Elric comic where it ends with him meeting his... Well, I, I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, the art's pretty good for the time it was made in. And there's also another run of it recently where they've had three comics released so far. And the fourth one keeps getting delayed for some reason. I blame COVID, but that's just me. And, yeah, just check out Elric in general. He's a pretty epic character. He His influence in, in culture is kind of interesting. Like, the Legacy of Kane series is blatantly influenced by Elric. From Kane's appearance to Soul Reaver to Raziel's fate to one day be stabbed and consumed by Soul Reaver. 
it's pretty obvious that the person, people working on Legacy of Cain were readers of Elric. They had to have been either, either that or it is a monumentally weird coincidence that all these things are similar. Oh, there's also Cain kind of fighting fate like Elric sometimes, I believe, does. But anyway, that's it for that. That's it for the video. Have a nice day, and remember the game was rigged from the start.